Now, as we get close to the supposed launch of Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown, normally around this time, developers would be planning their post-launch schedule. So what better way to help aid them in the discussion of getting some rare cars into the SC, which to be fair, we already have quite a few rare cars from that being the 911R, the Audi R8 RWS, and I'm sure there's going to be quite a lot of other vehicles in the car list that will be kind of exclusive to TDSC. But with that being said, let's take a look at the top five vehicles that I would hope to see. Well, actually top five rare vehicles I'd hope to see in Test Drive Unlimited Solo Crown post launch. Because of course, I'm pretty sure just like all other games out right now, you're going to be seeing some added cars after the game comes out. So with that being said, let's start off with one vehicle that I have not seen in any other racing game as of yet. Well, by the way, I'm trying to focus on open world racers, but let's talk about it. The Cayman 718 GT4 RS. This vehicle is just ahead. <laughs> you already know exactly what I'm going to say. And what better way to describe why this car should be in the game than taking a look at a video of it. Now, this is the sound of the Cayman GT4 RS, which has the exact same engine as the actual GT3 RS vehicle also coming from Porsche. Now, that being said, it has the same 0 to 30 miles per hour in 1.1 seconds time the 911 GT3 and the Chevy C8 Corvette and 0 to 60 in 2.8, which is quicker than any non-turbo or GT911, guys. And by the way, where this sound even comes from, and I'm just going to shut up so you can take a listen to this. Guys, the air intakes are literally right behind your ears. I mean, I've never driven this vehicle, so I'm sure trying to get the whole aspect of it is always going to be a bit hard. But KT have and honestly really done an impressive job with the vehicle sounds in the game so far. I mean, we've heard the Corvette. We've heard the GTR, and we've heard countless other vehicles in the game that sound pretty damn good. So that being said, I'm really excited to see how they make the Cayman GT4 RS sound, especially in interior cam. Speaking of interior cam, I'd love to see a higher steering wheel angle in the game, but hey, that's just me. Anyways, the final 1000 RPM just sounds ridiculous. And if KT can even match that sound in game, I'm buying this car the day it comes out, <laughs> to be honest with you guys. But the Cayman GT4 RS, I mean, by the way, I also want to kind of highlight, we already have one very rare car, and I've already mentioned it earlier, the 911R, which is one of the very unique and distinct portions. It's a manual, not the automatic like the Cayman GT4 RS, so you do have that kind of contrast between the two flagship vehicles. And the 911R is basically a lightweight version of the 911 GT3 RS. So it has the same engine, but it is lighter. And that alone makes it a pretty damn good car. Let's take a look at the next vehicle that is pretty much rare and I have slight hope. Technically, we have no idea if Toyota is coming to TDSC yet. There have been no confirmation of it yet. However, I'm going to remain on the very highly optimistic side because Toyota was actually in WRC. <laughs> now, obviously, you would have had to have Toyota in WRC because Kiloton was making WRC games from WRC 5 to WRC Generations, which was basically WRC 11. But hopefully, Nakon grew a very nice relationship with Toyota because they did have the GR Yaris uh, WRC version, to be fair, earlier in the game before it actually launched in the official WRC season. So I do hope Nakon is ready to shill up to Toyota to get this vehicle in the game, and that being the GR Yaris, and, or to be fair, AKA the GR Corolla, because in North America, we don't get the GR Yaris. In fact, actually, that's a lie. Mexico gets it, but Canada and the US don't. Don't know what happened there. But the GR Corolla, we actually do get in North America, but all of you Europeans don't get it. Quite an interesting thing from Toyota, to be fair. Now, the GR Corolla does actually have more power than the GR Yaris, which, of course, in fairness, comes with its larger weights. One's a two door uh, hatchback, the other one is a four door or five door hatchback, depending on what you want to call a hatchback with a little boot at the back and four doors. I mean, as long as it's not a Veloster, which, to be fair, the Veloster N 
I think that's even in Forza Horizon 5, but the Lost End is a pretty nice car as well, in my opinion. But we're not going to talk about that one yet. Now, as I've said, the GRRS is pretty much self-explanatory. Same thing with the GR Corolla. Either one, I just hope one of them make it. They're both all-wheel drive. They both look pretty damn good. And in fact, to be fair, Toyota's recent design, especially with that new Prius, which... To come to think about it, I wouldn't even mind the new Prius into the SC. It'd be one hell of a random car. But I think people would rather see the Fiat Multipla enter TDSC before they added the Toyota Prius. So who am I to argue? The Fiat Multipla has seemed to be a staple in the TDSC community so far. That's just my opinion. Now, moving on to the third car, I think is pretty damn rare. And I'd love to see it in TDSC is the De Tomaso P72. Now, a little bit of history behind this vehicle, if you did not know, it was actually acquired by the Hong Kong based Ideal Ventures in 2014. Hong Kong reference. And the funny thing was, this is also the same company that purchased Gumperts. Yes, the Gumperts. Now, the Gumperts Apollo IE has actually been confirmed in TDSC. We've seen it in a screenshot. I'll pop it up on the screen right now. However, the P72, which on the screen right now looks like one hell of a car, is actually based off the Apollo IE. Now, by the way, side note, the regular Gumpert to Polo, which is in TDU2, I wouldn't mind actually seeing that in the game as well later down the road at some point if we don't see it at launch. But anyways, let's go back to the P72. Now, as I've told you, this car looks ridiculous. It's powered by a nice hefty Coyote V8 and it's paired up to a six speed manual transmission. You gotta love it man i gotta love it anyways that manual transmission as you can see from the interior view hasn't opened the linkage so it does look pretty damn nice in my opinion and only 72 is actually made hence the name 72 and i do want to point out the engine is actually supercharged so some of the noises you could be hearing behind you will be pretty damn good that's the italian manufacturer di tomaso which i think is actually only in one other game at the moment and that's forza motorsport 4 and some other Forza, I think Forza Horizon 2, something like that. Honestly, I don't even remember. Long time ago, this brand was in the game before. Let's take a look at the fourth vehicle that's really damn rare. And hear me on this one. The Gordon Murray T33. Not the T50, but the T33. And I'll explain to you why. Now, a lot of you kind of don't like the T50 because of the big fan at the back. I'm not going to lie to you, I don't mind it. I'm actually a fan of it. But the funny thing is, two games have this car and two versions of it actually. Motorfest, uh, I think it's probably gonna get it in the next update, but it is in the crew too. Both the T50 and the uh, road or track legal version of it. I think it's the T50S or something of that sort, but that's already in Motorfest. And Forza Horizon and Forza Motorsport also have the T50. So with that being said, let's switch it up a bit. We don't need that. Let's take the one that I think a lot of people like better and is more along the lines of TDU because that would be the T33. It has the exact same engine, the exact same transmission, and it's a spider. A target top to be specific. And the design, I think a lot of you guys might actually like it better. And to be fair, the rear end reminds me a little bit of Spiker, which honestly, on the topic of Spiker, honorable mention on that car because from what i've heard spiker is a brand that is kind of struggling financially at the moment and i don't think they're handing out any new licenses so if kt or nakon were to ask to have one of the vehicles in the game i'm not too certain we'd actually see it fingers crossed otherwise because honestly spiker was quite one hell of a vehicle in tdu2 and in fact they actually had one of the casino reward cars in tdu2 but honestly the future is looking pretty grim for them although i'd love to be wrong in the future so anyways, back to the T33, it's again a 607 horsepower, 11,000 revving RPM supercar. What more can I say? Especially with the top down, cruising around Hong Kong Island on some of the roads, why would you not want something like this? But let's take a look at another vehicle that I think was pretty damn rare and I'd love to see. And it's the Ferrari Daytona SP3. I might get some hate for this because some of you aren't too fans of the design of it, but honestly, it looks pretty damn good. And the funny thing is, it is also powered by V12, except this time a 6.5 liter that's going to be hefty on the gas, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Anyways, 929 horsepower this vehicle has, and it is from the exact same engine as the 812 Compsione. And again, 
not really much else to say about the SP3 Daytona. I think the design speaks for itself. It's quite large from what I've seen. And by the way, I will have this car coming as a TDU2 mod in the near future. So watch out for that video as well, guys. And it might actually be in the TDU Universe car pack, which honestly, I have to catch up in the world of TDU because there's a lot going on. And I can't wait to share that with you guys as well. That's the SP3 Daytona. Now, just to give you guys some honorable mentions, since I just gave you the five vehicles, the Aston Martin Victor, which, funny enough, also manual transmission, and, of course, the Alfa Romeo 33 Stradale. Now, this car, design-wise, I mean, honestly, if we're lying to ourselves, we can't be lying to ourselves here, man. Italian design, especially Italian car design, is pretty damn good, in all fairness. There are some weird ones, like the Fiat Multipla, but this one isn't that bad at all. In fact, the funny thing is, I think the same guy that um, designed the Fiat Multipla also designed these cars I'm going to show you on the screen right now, which is pretty funny, right? Anyways, that's all I have to say in today's video, guys. If you did enjoy, leave a like and subscribe for more TDSC content. And let me know in the comment section below what you guys want to see in TDSC post-launch or what vehicles are you hoping to see at launch. Let me know in the comment section below. I'm Alex7, and I'll see you guys on the video. I'm out, guys. Peace.